Hey friend, John McLennan here, and in this video I want to share with you the number one best way to play an A chord on guitar, and it might not be what you think. Now what I want to share with you is the conclusions that I've come to after basically 25 years of playing tons of songs and just really nerding out on this, trying to get the smoothest and best sounds that I can when playing chord progressions. Progressions. But real quick, before we dive into that lesson, if you're new to the channel, I want to hook you up with a gift right away. I put together this awesome fretboard guide that uses five chords and five scales and basically shows you a system for mapping out your entire fretboard. You can grab it completely for free as my gift to you. Just go to johnmclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below. All right, well, with that said, let's get into it. All right, so I want to preface all of this with the understanding that really what it comes down to is you have to look at context. So I am thinking about what chord I'm on, where I'm going, and also where I came from before I get to that A chord. Now the A chord that I'm going to be talking about is just good old open position A chord. Now of course there's a lot of different ways we could play A you know, all over the neck, but I'm talking about the one in open position, and really regardless of your level, we're still gonna keep coming back to those classic open chords. So it makes sense that we would take some time to optimize this and make sure we're doing it the best that we can. Now, as I show you these variations, I want you to also keep in mind that if you have never played these chords this way, they are going to feel awkward. And if you are playing one of the ways that I mentioned in this video, I'm not trying to pick on you, I'm just trying to share some of my experience and do the best that I can to help you move further and get faster than I did in my playing. So the first A chord that I wanna show you is the one finger A chord, and I play it with my index finger like this. And this chord is particularly great for playing rock music or chords where you're changing quickly just to the A briefly and then on to another chord. For example, Joe Perry from Aerosmith might use this A chord like this. <laughs> Or maybe Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin might use it like this. So there I'm just using my index finger and I'm playing the open fifth string, second fret, second fret, second fret. And typically when I play this chord, I actually mute off the high E. You know, some people do lift up get it open like that, but most of the time I'm using this in a rock setting where I'm not worried about having nice pretty high notes on top, I'm just kind of getting the meat and potatoes of that chord. So that's great for rock, it's also great for blues, you know. Using that one finger there. Now the next way that I wanna show you, and I really don't use this way very much at all, is two, three, four. So I'm gonna be playing those same notes, and here I'll add in the high E string, and I'll play this. Now I did play this chord for a while at one point, and really the only time I could think of when I'm using this shape is if I'm playing something like you know, a bar chord where I'm I'm arpeggiating it, and I'm trying to get, you know, those notes really clean, then I would use two, three, four. Now the next way I want to show you is one of the most common ways people play A, but I actually think it's one of the worst ways to play A, and that is like this. And that is using index, middle, ring. 
one, two, three in a row like that. And one of the things that I don't like about this is you can't really fit all your fingers up close to the frets. When we play guitar, we want to keep our fingers close to the frets. If they're too far back, they're going to buzz. It's going to be harder to push down. We want to make sure we're up close to the fret, but really, I can't, you know, fit my fingers in there and, you know, most people can't because you're fighting, you're fighting the neck here and you can't really get a clean sound. We also tend to very commonly slip back when we play. So, you know, I aim for right up close next to the frets, but sometimes my my fingers do slip back a little bit. So, here you're really kind of in in the danger zone back there with this A chord. The other reason that I really don't like this A chord is let's say for example we're playing a song in the key of A. Now a song in the key of A is going to typically have chords like A, D, and E in them. Those are going to be the most common chords we'll see. Well if we go from an A to a D chord, we don't have a ton of fingers in common. Now what I like to do instead is I like to use this fingering two, one, three. And this I think is one of the best ways to play the A chord. And that's just from the fifth string down, open, two, 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 open. And here I've, I'm using my index finger and I can tuck it in a little closer. Now, if you're not used to playing this way, it's going to feel awkward and you've got to consider the fact that you've spent a lot of time maybe playing one of those other ways. So you're going to have to relearn this, but in the long run, you're going to be better off and let me show you why. Here, we've got the A chord. Now, let's say I go to D. Check this out. I've got two fingers already on the strings. Look at how easy this transition is. A to D. I can keep this finger down, and then this finger is already on the string. I slide it up. Now let's compare that with A like this. Here, I have to lift two fingers up and go like this. Here, I only have to lift one. So even if I practice this first way of playing it, say I practice that, you know, I don't sleep, I play it 24 hours a day, it will never sound as smooth as this transition. And you'll see this when you watch like bluegrass players that play a lot of songs that are just A, D, and E, you know, the one, four, and five, they're always using these chord fingerings because they're more efficient and they're going to sound smoother. Then of course, when we go to the E as well, we've got this finger here. We can slide it right back and then go right back to A. So it's very efficient between those most common chords in the key of A. Now, as a few bonus tips here, I wanna explain what I hear all the time. They say, John, you know, I have larger fingers. Maybe the scale length on my guitar isn't right or the way the nut is cut, the strings are too close together. Well, what you need to do is use this technique called double stomping. And this isn't talked about because it's an advanced technique and a lot of people don't use it. But what it is, is the idea that you cover two strings at once. So I could play that same A chord, you know, let's say that I have a lot larger finger and it's too hard for me to get all these fingers in there, then what I'm going to do is cover two strings with one finger. And I personally think this is an advantage. Like a lot of people say, oh, well, John, you know, you got skinnier fingers and you can fit your fingers in and it's all perfect. The fact is, is I wish that I had larger fingers because there's so many cool chords that I use this technique on and it's actually harder for me to do that having skinnier fingers. So here I've got the two notes that I'm covering on the, th the third and fourth strings there and then you can put your ring finger so this would be two two three open so you could try your A chord like that. You could get real experimental with it. You could try you know just playing one note here and then double stopping with the ring like that. So there's a lot of possibilities, but again, the best way is the way that's efficient for the song that you are playing. So I generally could categorize 98% of songs into these 
two categories of is it a rock thing where I'm moving quickly between the chords? If so, I'm gonna use the one finger. If I want a real beautiful acoustic sound, you know, like I'm playing James Taylor or Simon and Garfunkel or something like that, then I'm gonna be using this A chord. All right, so hope that helps you out. Again, as my 25 years of literally nerding out on this, I mean, I have played one chord one way for 20 years and then changed it and realized like five years ago, wow, this is so much of a better way. And then it took me six months to actually relearn to play a simple open chord that way. But now that I've done that, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so much better. I could never go back. So hope this gives you some clarity and gives you some ideas when you're working on your songs. And to help you even more, be sure to grab my ultimate fretboard guide at the first link down below. And this is gonna show you the five chords and scales that I use to map out the entire fretboard. And if you wanna learn songs, you wanna learn to improvise, this is gonna be one of the most useful PDFs you'll see. And it's completely free. Just go to johnmcclennan.com slash fretboard guide or click the first link down below as my gift to you. Hope you enjoy that. And if you want to learn more chords, then be sure to check out this video next.